Hey Trader Parker here with another video. Today I'll be introducing you to a concept that I've been working on. It's basically a multi time frame automatic length adjustments. So normally when you have an indicator on the screen, um, that length or that indic uh, the average, whatever you're using, has to be adjusted for each time period. Uh, some traders, I just leave the RSI at 14. Um, I couldn't do that because I look at everything within this time thing. And you've uh, seen my videos on a five minute. I use a 12 because five, um, 12, five minute bars equals uh, an hour. So, and going from that 96 bars to give you eight hours, but that's how I set up my uh, different, uh, different indicators. But I wanted to show you one that I, but that can be uh, cumbersome going to different time frames and having to uh, change them all up. So that's one of the things I've, I've actually been working on. I actually created this indicator. Well, I added it to some of my other indicators that I've already created. And if you look at it, this is my um, irregular body or the anomalies that uh, Ann Coolen talks about in her books. Uh, I think she calls them anomalies and then she goes back to the irregular bodies. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is if you look down here, you will see, yeah, this ES is just doing that. I don't know why the ES jumps like that, but we're going to take it down to a smaller time period. So when you open up the indicator, you can actually see. These are the dedicated time frames. So you have five minute equals the length one of 96 um, and 10 minutes equals the uh, length of 48. And those are just eight hours. So if you take, um, if you take 60 and multiply by eight, you get 480 and then you divide it by 10 and you get 48. And same thing with the uh, five minute. So that's pretty much how I set mine up. Um, this last one is 10 days. It goes with that 10 day and an hour I got to set up for eight and at 30 minute I got to set up for 16. But when I jump to those different time frames, the indicators themselves, I have it programmed in my uh, true irregular bodies of volume price analysis. My uh, this is a new my new volume indicator and uh, it's basically the same thing. It's the uh, buy sell volume indicator. I just didn't add the time the uh, multi time frame length automatic adjustments to it. So that's what uh, the labels. I didn't do it either. I don't feel as so though it should uh, needs needs to be added to the labels because you're gonna change those regardless. But um, this is pretty much what it is. And like I said, I can jump to any of those different time frames and those links automa automatically adjust for me without me going into there and having to constantly change anything. So I can be on any of those charts, any of those time frames, I should say, and it'll automatically adjust the length of the indicator for these different time frames. And this was today's uh, price action for the uh futures and you can see the indicator worked out pretty good think as well come on and the irregular body indicator worked out pretty good you can see right here and you had this steep drop off uh this is this morning isn't it 524 so yeah you had the steep drop off this morning then you had this period of consolidation where uh es consolidated and you had this move up and it's based in volume. In regular body showed up to be support, and you had this push down. But you can see how the irregular bodies are showing up for uh, support and resistance. And if you're unfamiliar with the irregular bodies, you can read Ann um, Coolen's book. She goes back and forth for ir irregular bodies or uh, anomalies. And if you haven't watched my video on the bundle, that you get all three, we're really all four for these indicators. Um, I go into depth about the uh, irregular body sort of anomalies and inverse basically price and volume divergences. And with this one right here, you can see that this body is smaller than the previous body, but it has more volume. 
Well, actually, because I have it set up on an average, it's just not going to work that way. So I would have to take this and put it back on original. This is how the, um, she explained in her book, and this is how I programmed it according to what she said in a book. Now, I took it a step for further and programmed the averages in there. So you get a lot more um, noise when you set it up on the original, but it works just fine. If you look at it, it works just fine. But to get less noise, I put in the uh, above average volume. And you get less noise, and it looks uh, more of a clearer picture as well that you can see, hey, this support, this resistance. And this is on the 5-minute. We can push it to the 10-minute. And like I said before, the uh, everything automatically adjusts. The links automatically adjust without me having to go in there and change anything. The default, if you go to... Um, if you look in here, you go to a time frame like a one minute or a two minute, three minute or a week or a month. The default is one. So the default is one for those different uh, for those different time periods. But it's six of them in there. So if you choose to use one of those different time periods, just uh, change one of those periods to uh, to that specific time period and change the length. Like you can change this to a week and be on a weekly chart and then just go up here and save it. And it's, anytime you have this indicator on the screen, it automatically, the length, whatever length you're using will automatically adjust to it. And we'll go to the 30 minute. And like I said, I have my volume set up the same way, but the labels are different. And we can go to the hourly. And right now it's fighting to get back into this area. Because you can look right here, it served as resistance before where it couldn't get back in here. So it's in here now, but it still had to fight with this candle to get in there. So we can go to the year. And you can see this is the ES on the year. And like I said, I don't know why this thing is jumping like that. And I'm going to get rid of all my drawing so we can see a clear picture. And this is the clear picture. Here it is for the pandemic. And like I said, I have this set on 10 for the day. You can change to 21. You can change to whatever you want to change it to. But I put it on 10. 10 gives me two weeks. And usually I have it on 21 because that gives me a month <clears throat> worth of data. But this is... Uh, and right now, with if you're looking at the futures, you can see where it... Uh, this is still valid. No, uh, no candle or close actually really broke up against it. I'm looking for a candle to break up against it and not just sit in here like these candles did. And you can see down here, these candles are actually breaking above this area that uh, showed to be support right here. You can see this is a huge amount of volume right here. And you can see it's actually a huge amount of volume all the way across really in this area right here all this volume came in and it's working like stopping volume you uh read and coolen's book she talks about um i believe a ship a ship in the ocean if it's going for a throttle it can't just come to a complete halt it's going to be a it needs a little way to go before and can actually stop so you have what she called the rubber band effect where it goes a little bit below and then it comes back up into those areas of support and resistance. And you can see it's going to have this area of resistance sitting right here waiting for it and this one as well. But hopefully we continue to move up on the uh, futures. As you can see, we're moving up pretty nicely uh, after hours. And let's go to the spy. Same situation with the spy. You can see how this area was a service support, now serving as resistance. 
Spy ch tried to break above. It couldn't came back down. It almost came back into this area to retest this uh, support, which was resistance. But it pushed back above, broke back into this area, had to break back above this area of resistance and form a new support. And we can go to QQQ. I think it looks pretty much the same. Yep, pretty much the same as the SPA. Uh, one disappointment is, but well, all the horrible news is going on around Tesla and Elon Musk. You couldn't expect anything else. So let's go look at all the year. And I forgot to put those lines back on the ES, didn't I? Yep, looks like I'm gonna be redrawing those things. So TS. And Tesla's pretty much fell out of it. So let's look at it on a greater uh time period so we'll change this 21 to give us a monthly and that still didn't give us a whole lot so let's do three months that gave us something that gave us something this support area actually carried over and I should be able to show other clouds to get another. There you go. Actually worked as a support area. And then it was breached. And they created new resistance levels right here. And that's pretty much Tesla. Uh... We can go back to ES now that I have on this greater time period. Let's see what it actually shows us. Now, this area is a support. We can get rid of those other lines because right now they are confusing me because I want to focus on what is showing. And I'm looking at this. It's going to be another area of resistance. Well, this one's showing an area of support. You can really see it in there because this was resistance. After it broke above, it came support. You see this huge amount of buying pressure, which buyers agreed that, hey, we want to support here. So the candle's actually sitting right there on that red, on the top of this red candle high in, in between these two clouds. And it's sitting on this one. So hopefully it keeps pushing up. But. If you're unfamiliar with my uh, buy sell pressure, I wanted to show you what it originally. If you uh, notice this, this is one of the rips are used, but you can find this same one on a uh, used think script as well. This lower one, and basically what you're seeing is uh, the red is the selling volume, and the green is uh, is just volume itself. So I don't care about that one. So I'll just go into the code and show it to you what it's actually doing. So what it's actually doing is taking volume, multiplying it by the close minus the low, divided by the high close, and it's giving you that percentage of volume on that candle that's this considered buying. And this would be considered selling on that candle. It's the high minus the close divided by the uh whole of the candle which is the high minus the low and you get those two ranges and then once that divide and you multiply the volume you get the um, uh, selling volume uh, percentage of selling volume so you can find this one use think script it's pretty it looks nice but it didn't do me a whole lot of good because it doesn't have average well it does have this average line in here but it still didn't do me any good because it's not showing me basically i want the colors to reflect the averages that are in the um that i'm actually witnessing in the volume and that's why you get all these different colors within mine right here and this is the original one i uh created the concept buy sell volume concept and right now it's set to 21 and I can set it to 10 and it should give me the basically the same thing. 
There we go. Basically the same thing. Except for, I, yeah, I did that. Yep. There's some minor things I did change within this. But you can see it's bar average percentage is 26. And that's basically a percent. It's just buying versus selling percent. Or really buying minus selling percent. Or average. Percent average on these candles. And it came out like this because I wanted the same effect that that one, uh, the the um, think use think script had. So you can have this effect. It looks pretty, but you don't have to have it. You can just have the regular candles like I've done with um, regular volume, like I did with this one right here. And I don't particularly care about seeing the. Uh, buying and selling uh, difference like that I rather just see it reflected in the actual volume um, because when um, when when the selling volume is higher just give me a red volume candle and, and I mean red volume node and a regular red uh, candle I don't have to have something that looks like this well this percentage of, of, of was buying and this was red to me it just looks pretty so we'll, we'll leave it at that. But I really just have something like this with my averages working like a cloud over it and my uh, uh, volume channel, which is to be the highest uh, candle among 10 uh, in, yeah, for that average. And this is the 50%. And I just got rid of the lower uh, channel because it adjusts every time you get a new volume node. So, and this is pretty much going to be the end of the video. And the other thing I did was I just separate separate out of my labels as well because this so many labels are in here that you're not going to be able to see the actual volume, especially when you go down to those lower time periods and you have to zoom in, you won't be able to see it. So that was my reason for separating the labels, and I usually scrunch those all the way down so I can actually see the volume and this works just fine it, I mean it works just fine as well if you wanted something uh unique and pretty it, it works just fine it'll color the bars as well it's the same information just uh I rather have less information when it comes to this than that but they work the same way And this is pretty much is going to be the end of the video. Hopefully, we are going to be keep pushing up a little bit more for the spy. Let's do one more thing. So, four months to be eighty-four, and see what we get with those averages. And I need to push this to three year again, three year day. You can see how this really held up and made help for support until price completely fell through, created a new area of support, brought pushed through, got rejected on this from this candle right here. Yeah, I drew this line from the volume node and it just showed that rejected as well. It's pretty late here. Uh and my version point of control, this pink line, is holding up real nice. But I'm starting to ramble because I'm getting tired. But this is the end of the video. If you, uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And I'm once I work out all the kinks and bugs with this uh, multi-time frame automatic length uh, adjustment concept, I'll uh, put that one up as well. But I wanted to go ahead and introduce it to you. Or introduce the concept, and if you're interested in it, I can probably put on different indicators for you. But if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. If you uh, found this video helpful, please leave me a, uh, a thumbs up. Or if you had some comments or anything you wanted to say, uh, leave them in the comment section. I wish you the best, and uh, stay safe out there, and God bless.